All right, so we are back again with our next speaker, Sharan, CBO of GoSax. Uh, so to say a little bit about Sharan, so he's also been involved in the crypto space for quite a while. He was uh, involved with Uno Coin in the early days. He was, uh, you know, heading. He was a VP of marketing and business development, and then he moved on to Cruxpay. He was a CBO at Cruxpay, and he's currently the CBO at Coin Switch. So welcome, Sharan. Pleasure to have you on board. Yeah, hey guys. Um, nice, nice. Thanks. Thank you for inviting me over. Such a pleasure. Awesome, awesome. So before we dive into Bitcoin and Coin Switch, so why don't you give a brief intro about yourself and you know for the people that don't know? Yeah. So, so first thing first, like everywhere I go, I keep telling people that I've been a happy-go-lucky kid, uh, primarily because I got into crypto pretty accidentally, and uh, straight out of college was my first job with Uno Coin. Pretty much, even I hadn't heard of Bitcoin so much, but it sounded fun. So we jumped in, uh, and then I, I, I got into crypto like in 2014. I've been with Uno Coin for since like till 2018. Uh, it's, it has been a fantastic journey with Uno Coin, and post that I moved into Coin Switch. Uh, Cruxpin and Coin Switch are basically both from the same company. Uh, so it's been six years now, and while I did start off as a lucky kid, uh, I did pretty quickly realize that okay. Uh, I really, really need to dig deeper into this industry and understand because it's, it's, it's an opportunity that not that everyone gets, right? And I would say I have been thankful every single day of my life uh, for being in this industry. Absolutely. I mean, it's such an interesting industry, right? There's always action going on. There's always news. There's always there's something, there's something going on. It's never boring. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's nice that... It's interesting when you are the one who's investing in. It's also super interesting when you're one running an exchange. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so uh, how did so CoinSwitch has a unique background, right? In in that it, you guys launched the global product first, were super successful, and then you launched Kuber, which is the Indian product. So, why don't you uh, tell the story about CoinSwitch? How did it come about, and how did Kuber launch? So, so back in 2017 is when CoinSwitch kind of got started, like it took off, right? And back then, uh, the whole idea was that my founders, the people that I work with, were looking out for an easy way to compare prices and swap currencies. So they decided to build a product for themselves first. And they did that uh, in a very beta stage. And they realized that they were able to take care of the arbitrage and make profit. And then they had a few more friends who were interested in the crypto circle. So they handed over the beta product to them as well. And even they really liked it. And then we just, they decided that let's go make it public. So when they decided to go make it public is when I kind of joined in uh, to, to spearhead the business part of it. And then right then is also when the, the crypto banking uh, ban came into the picture, right? So all of our ambitions of doing anything in India kind of took a back seat. Uh, it was a humongous challenge uh, running a crypto company from India to the world. Uh, Did you guys have plans to launch a product in for the Indian market at that time? We we are we were thinking about doing something for the Indian market, right? Like so okay. we launched a global product. We wanted to do that for India as well, right? Have some sort of fiat on ramp come in, but that didn't really take off, uh, primarily because of the regulations and stuff like that, right? And launching a global product from India is a huge challenge, right? Uh, but I think we have done a pretty good job. So any if you if if you guys have been down the crypto rabbit hole and you would have probably come across wallets like Trezor, Exodus, Coinomi, Bread, Coin Payments, name anything you want, right? And all of these companies, MetaMask, have been using our APS at the back end. Uh, what we've done is made, what, we, what we've done is make it extremely easy for people to swap between any two currencies, uh, right? Without having to create an account on any crypto exchange. So we just typically call ourselves booking.com of cryptocurrency. Awesome. So in, in your previous product, the coin switch international product where people could exchange more like uh, any crypto to any crypto that you guys had and they don't have to create an account or do KYC or any of that. It was just simple. You know, you just simply, simply swap it. That's right. It's like a, yeah, click of a button. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So how did coin switch Uber got get started and uh, was the Supreme Court did, did was the Supreme Court decision a fa big factor in it, or what was the story behind it? Yes, I think it was a huge factor uh, to uh, step inside India and build something for India. Uh, for one, that we did know that 
in India, one of the biggest challenges that we saw was that there really wasn't any platform uh, that was very focused on retail investors, right? Most fo- most platforms really focus on crypto trader traders, like they were building products for them. But even for someone like my dad, uh, it was extremely difficult to get into this platform, primarily because the UI UX complexities and things like that. So that was our first step while we entered into India. Like, how do we build something so simple that it's extremely, extremely easy for even a noob to get into crypto. Like we made it so easy that I know people who have accidentally bought Bitcoin on our platform. Right? So, so, so that's, that's, that's what we try to build in India. And I think a lot of our numbers speaks for itself that we've been able to successfully do that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, you guys recently hit a million downloads on Google Play Store, right? Which is incredible. Right. Because you guys launched not even, it's been a year or is it? No, it's been anymore? six months. Wow, incredible, right? Like. And the product itself shows like it's so easy to use. And uh, that that's one of the, like for the US market, they have Coinbase. And for the Indian market, I think uh, Coinswitch is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, yeah. Awesome. All right. So one of the interesting things about Coinswitch is that you guys are not just tapping into the crypto audience that's already there, the 5 million, but you guys are also get, getting more people in, right? The new people who haven't, who haven't heard about or who have heard about Bitcoin, but they have never invested in it. They've never done a transaction. And so, I mean, I'm curious to know what, what is your user demographic look like and how many of them are new users buying Bitcoin for the first time? I think a lot of our users are first time investors of cryptocurrency. In fact, they're first time investors in anything. I know a lot of users who have never really bought stocks or anything before. So the very first investment has been cryptocurrencies. Uh, they typically fall anything between uh, 18 plus to 27. That's where a majority of our users are from. Pretty uh, unfortunately male dominated. Uh, I would love to see a lot of more women folks come in, which I'm seeing now, which is interesting. Uh, and we, we, we see a lot of people coming from tier two, tier three cities, and that kind of makes us happy. Like I am basically from a small state called Nagaland. And I, I last time I looked at the record, I have 320 users from Nagaland. Awesome. Wow. That's amazing. All right. A spicy question. Do you have, can you reveal any celebrities or uh, famous personalities that use coins? I can. I, I, I cannot reveal it because of the privacy issues with the celebs, yeah. uh, but we do have a ton of celebs who use coins. Which could, be. could you tell like what kind of celebs at least like Bollywood or is it comedians or what kind of celebs? We, we, we have Bollywood celebs. We have comedians like pretty a tire, a comedians and stuff. Uh, you guys would pretty soon see some of them come and talk about the product. Uh, okay. So yeah, but I can I cannot because I really would have to get permission for yeah. that. Definitely, would- definitely. Um, so one of the interesting things that you guys are also you know partnering with mainstream brands to you know pr- uh, promote Bitcoin and I saw the Cred uh, app also had a session about. Uh, coin switch and such integrations which are really good to see because it's that that shows that bitcoin is going mainstream in india it's no longer no longer a niche you know a weird market or anything like that so could you tell more about those kind of uh, integrations that you've done and how, sure. how have you been you know so, so two things really drove us to that point one was the fact that a lot of people uh, thought that cryptocurrency is still a lot western concept like it's not there in india yet uh, many of you may be surprised to know this because we, when you get into the crypto rabbit hole, you're kind of surrounded by crypto people around you. So you kind of always assume that, oh, everybody knows crypto, right? But when you actually go down and do survey, call up random people, tell them if they have heard of Bitcoin, they did hear of Bitcoin, a lot of them, but a lot of them do not even know like, okay, what are the exchanges in India, right? Or are there even exchanges in India? Is it even legal in India, right? Uh, like they're really surprised when we tell them that like, well, we have 1 million users. They're like, oh my God, we can't believe this. And I'm saying like, this is just one exchange. And there are like so many of them out there, right? Uh, The second reason that really uh, uh, got us into this point was the fact that people still didn't consider cryptocurrencies to be legitimate, right? Uh, For two reasons. One, definitely the regulations and stuff like that because of uh, regulatory uncertainty, people weren't really comfortable investing in cryptocurrencies. Uh, On the other hand, some people really did think that uh, it's some some sort of scam and it cannot really go up like that and like you know people didn't really understand what it is now there are two ways of it right now there are people who are interested to know about it so they're going to come down say it and ask you how to do it but what are you going to do about people who are just sitting casually in their uh, living rooms and telling people cryptocurrency is a scam like how, how are you going to battle those people they are not going to come to you and listen to you maybe they don't even want to listen to you 
right? Uh, so, so when we started doing brand integrations, there were the two agendas that we had was definitely one was to get users, but more importantly was to bring legit legit legitimacy to the cryptocurrency industry in India. So. Uh, cred is one such example that we worked with, right? Uh, where you could burn your cred points to get cryptocurrencies. We also work with pretty bigger brands. For example, we have worked with uh, Cult, CureFit. So if you take up a CureFit subscription, you get cryptocurrencies. Uh, we have recently partnered with Oyo Rooms. So if you every, anyone of you take up a subscription of Oyo Rooms, they'll send you free BTCs. Uh, we're launching something with Ghana.com. So every time you take up a subscription of Ghana, they will send you uh, free BTCs and stuff. So when these brands, uh, even book my show is coming up soon with some kind of offers on cryptocurrencies. So when this kind of brands really offer cryptocurrencies to the users, right? At least a bunch of users now look at it in a very different way. Like, because they know that this brands would have definitely done their research, right? They just wouldn't partner with someone, right? And this has kind of really, really bought, brought in a lot of users to start investing. I know a lot of people who started uh, investing in cryptocurrencies after they've seen this kind of brand affiliations. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. I mean, it's the narrative, right? Because uh, like the West is way ahead of this in terms of narrative, where it's, you know, like micro strategies and we invested $1 billion in Bitcoin and all that. But in India, it's still, people still view it as something taboo or something illegal or something like that. And you guys are doing an amazing job where it's no it's no longer that. It's, you know, main, mainstream into, as you said, with the brand affiliations, you know, you get, you build that trust, uh, which is amazing. Right. So... One of the features that you guys launched uh, for Diwali was the gift option, right? Where you could uh, gift, essentially gift Bitcoin. Yes. Uh, so you, where you could, uh, I could gift Bitcoin in terms of INR. So I could give 500 rupees worth of uh, Bitcoin to anyone. So I'm, I'm curious to know, like, how, how did the campaign go? Because that sounds like an interesting concept. And uh, how was it successful? And do you think that's a viable way for, uh, you know, the crypto community to onboard even more people? Uh, the kind of strategies that we've built for Indian market has been very different, right? Uh, primarily because uh, all the team is based out of India, so we understand the Indian markets better. Now, a lot of time, like a lot of people think that, okay, all these crypto gift cards are uh, strategies to get more users, but th that is the secondary goal. That is not even the primary goal of why we do something like that. Uh, we had close to around 20,000 gift cards getting sold out uh, in the Diwali session, which was uh, better than what we expected. But the whole idea behind why did we launch a gift card to be very, very honest, was not user acquisition, but to kind of make investment feel more homely around Bitcoins. For example, why most Indians invest in gold, right? Most in Indians invest in gold as compared to stocks or anything else because gold is something that we've always seen growing up, right? We have like, like I'm, I'm basically a South Indian. So every time a kid is born in the family, someone comes with a gold ring, someone says, okay, give them gold. It's more of a homely feeling, a traditional value associated because it, it has a gifting feature to it. Now you wouldn't really see people gifting stocks, right? Although the trend is now kicking in, but you didn't see that, right? Yeah. We realized that when you bring the whole angle of, uh, tradition into the gifting culture, right? Like, like you can now gift cryptocurrencies to your families in Diwali. Uh, that is the way to bring the whole country into this, right? That was our whole idea that this is the possible and this is the way to look at it. Like to give a different uh, way you look at this kind of investments rather than something that is just like binary numbers and some, some charts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Um, so as we know, there are about uh, 5 million crypto users in India as of now, and which is like a very small percentage of the population. So how do you think, you know, we as a crypto community, right? How can we increase the adoption in India? How can we get it more mainstream? Uh, very honestly speaking, uh, until unless regulations don't kick in, kick in you're not going to see a lot of people get into cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, which is a good thing for people who are already investing in cryptocurrencies. Which means that when that happens, which I'm very optimistic about, uh, you would see the whole world coming in and a lot of people would anyways be like the people are already invested in people probably who are already in the chat section of this uh, conversation are going to going to benefit a lot from that. Right. Uh, the, the way I see that is one definitely like I mentioned regulations. The other thing definitely has to be about education. Right. I think every cryptocurrency exchange today, uh, whoever has raised funds and all of that. Right have or are continuously doing something or the other trying to uh, educate people about cryptocurrencies 
right? Uh, we are doing our fair share of stuff trying to educate people about cryptocurrencies. For example, we work with we work with influencers like Dhruv Rathi. We have worked with like hundreds of YouTubers. We have worked with brands. We've we're doing workshops in some of the most uh, various colleges like IIT Bombay, etc., trying to educate people about uh, cryptocurrencies and stuff. I think that is the second thing. Uh, the third thing is that, to be very honest, I think I, I was just looking at Satvik's talk prior to this, is that let's stop explaining every Tom, Dick, and Harry about blockchain. Like I, I, I think that turns off more people than anything else, right? Like the more you make it complicated, people really want to run away from it. True. Right? Like it's very. I, I keep telling people that it's really easy uh, to explain what Bitcoin solves as compared to how it solves. True. Right. Like you, there, there, there's something that I've read before. They say that you can either you can either do you can either explain your grandmother what how Skype works, or you can actually hop on a call with your grandma on Skype, right? And I would always say that you know choose the later option. Absolutely. I mean, uh, most of us use internet now. I mean, most people don't don't really know how the internet works in the back end, right? right. But they, they know how to use it. What's what's the benefit of it? And I think this Bitcoin is also a similar thing. Right? Yeah, th that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, we are uh, coming to the end of the discussion. The final question, the spicy masala question is the price prediction. As we know, $40,000, where do you think it's going short term? Uh, okay, I would be a little bit more diplomatic on this. Uh, have gone wrong a couple of times. So I kind of really avoid questions around pricing. But, but one thing that I've seen with this price rally is that the previous price rallies that you've seen uh, were mostly driven by FOMO, right? And people who are trying to get rich quickly. So putting in money, pulling it out. This rally has mostly been backed by things like uh, big institutional investors investing in, right? And a lot of large companies like PayPal, etc., offering cryptocurrencies to the customers. Now, these are developments that would not just flip. Right. Anything that's driven by a bunch of people trying to put and make money can can just turn any time. Right. But something like this kind of really stabilizes it. Uh, it kind of gives the base as in more adoption happens. And these are this is what I call real adoption. Right. As in when adoption happens, a lot of people, uh, you start seeing the prices actually gain those values. Right. So I think uh, that's that's where I believe that this is going to go. It's, it's stabilized and I think it's going to go higher and higher. Uh, but having said that, not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. So do not take me for it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing on this uh, session is or any, anything is financial advice, guys. So please don't take it as financial sure. advice. All right. So we have one question from audience. We have one question. Um, so what is your user, acquis user acquisition strategy for India as not enough people even buy basic insurance here? Uh, well, for me, the whole idea is that go go first of all collaborate right like i don't believe in a user acquisition strategy of like a company like like oh i'm going to acquire a user for me the way i look at it like as a company we look at it is that acquire a user for the industry right and then be the best player in the industry so they naturally come to you right so anything that we do around it is not really driven by the fact that uh, you know, like the user has to really come to us. So, so education being the key, right? We really try to work, go really grassroots level. One thing that I've seen over and over uh, that we do slightly different from most other companies in the space is that uh, take the vernacular angle, right? Uh, a lot of folks that I see on our Telegram groups and stuff, because my name has a Nair on the end, and uh, they identify that I'm someone from Kerala, they directly reach out to me because they had a language barrier. Right, uh, they couldn't really speak Hindi or couldn't really communicate in English, and then I realized like if there are so many people out there uh, who, you know, who have the language barrier, then we really have to get in there, right? Get those people, and get get explain the concept of cryptocurrency, explain why it is important for them, right, in their own language. So that has been like. Like just two user strategies, one build kick-ass products. Yeah. Like there's no user strategy as great as building kick-ass products. Second, educate people, right? And if you do that too, right? I think you can be the biggest player. And I think I can say that because we are on that path. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So with that, we have come to the end of the session. If you guys any have any more questions, you can just shoot now. 
or i think we'll end the session now um yep all right all right perfect thank you sharan so much thank this was a very amazing. awesome session all right all right guys so we'll be back with our last speaker in like 5 minutes so all right see you guys